Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. Arbitrum governance proposal sparks controversy. This past week, the Arbitrum team tried but failed to pass a controversial proposal. Arbitrum Improvement Proposal, or AIP-1, aimed to allocate 750 million ARB tokens, valued at around $1 billion, to the Arbitrum Foundation for funding special grants without undergoing a full on-chain governance process. However, over 78% of token holders voted against the proposal. Then, Arbitrum employee Patrick McCory revealed that the proposal served as a formality to inform the community of decisions that had already been implemented. On-chain data shows that the Arbitrum Foundation had already used 50.5 million of the proposed 750 million ARB tokens. The Foundation clarified that 10 million ARB tokens was converted to fiat, while 40 million was loaned to a sophisticated actor in the space, which appears to be Wintermute, according to Look On-Chain. After facing significant community backlash, the team decided to break down this contentious first proposal into separate ones. In a new announcement on Wednesday, the Arbitrum Foundation said it would keep the remaining 700 million ARP tokens in its wallet until the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO, approves a budget and lockup schedule. The Arbitrum debacle was discussed at length in this week's episode of The Chopping Block. Haseeb Qureshi, host of The Chopping Block and managing partner at Dragonfly, suggested that this event will forever change the governance in Arbitrum. He said it's a precedent that tends not to go away. Crypto influencer Kobe's tweet kickstarts $50 million in liquidations. An encrypted message containing the text, Interpol Red Notice for CZ, sparked a frenzy on social media on Monday, leading to more than $50 million in Bitcoin liquidations. The message was first shared by crypto Twitter influencer Jordan Fish, aka Kobe, and was encrypted using the SHA-256 cryptographic hash function. Though it is theoretically impossible to decrypt the hash function in a few hours, the meaning behind the message was revealed, igniting rumors of an international arrest warrant for Binance CEO Chengpeng Zhao, or CZ. Bitcoin's value subsequently dropped to an intraday low of $27,414, and over $50 million in Bitcoin liquidations occurred. Binance dismissed the rumor as false, and Kobe later addressed the situation stating that someone with whom he had discussed the rumor likely leaked the hidden message, causing the chaos. Kobe apologized for the incident and plans to reduce his tweeting in the future. Despite facing a lawsuit from the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, on-chain data reveals no sign of investors fleeing Binance, according to a Glassnode report. Although the exchange recorded the largest net outflows in history with negative $295 million in stablecoin outflows per day, its Bitcoin and Ethereum balances remain unharmed. Glassnode analysts commented, Despite net outflows of stablecoins, the market does not yet appear to be expressing widespread concern about Binance's standing. Moreover, Coindesk reported that Binance declined an offer from Tron founder Justin Sun to purchase his stake in competitor Huobi due to its alleged links to China, which Binance wants to distance itself from, according to an anonymous source. 3AC founders led exchange OpenX goes live. The founders of bankrupt crypto hedge fund 3 Arrows Capital, or 3AC, Kyle Davies and Su Zhu, launched a new venture called OpenExchange, which offers spot and futures trading of cryptocurrencies and plans to facilitate claims trading for users affected by bankruptcies of crypto trading platforms such as FTX, Celsius, and even 3AC. OPNX's CEO Leslie Lamb stated, quote, there are over 20 million claimants worldwide for FTX, Celsius, and other platforms that are stuck waiting years just to access their funds. The exchange saw just $13.64 in trading volume in its first 24 hours, though Lamb said the firm plans to grow liquidity via an open and transparent market-making program. Despite facing criticism over their past failed ventures, Davies and Zhu appear undeterred, responding to critics on Twitter even though the OPNX Twitter account was suspended. Meanwhile, Mark Lamb, co-founder of CoinFlex, offered Bitcoin cash promoter Roger Ver an olive branch that includes two years of free trading on OPNX. Ethereum projects want to prevent MEV. Over 30 Ethereum projects have joined forces to launch MEV Blocker, a tool designed to prevent maximal extractable value, or MEV bots, from front-running transactions. Developed by CowSwap, Agnostic Relay, and BeaverBuild, 
The initiative is supported by several popular Ethereum-based protocols, such as GnosisDAO, Balancer, Shapeshift, and Paraswap. A MeV blocker routes transactions through a network of searchers structured to block front-running and sandwich attacks. Users will receive 90% of the profits that searchers bid to backrun transactions, while validators will receive 10% of the profits. MEV bots have reportedly extracted more than $1.38 billion from users, impacting traders, liquidity providers, and NFT minters alike. By adding the customer Remote Call Procedure, or RPC endpoint, to crypto wallets, users can shield their transactions from MEV bots. However, according to Gnosis CEO Martin Koppelman, Transactions may take 10% longer than usual with this RPC. This initiative comes after a recent incident in which an Ethereum validator successfully front-ran MEV sandwich bots, making off with $25 million in a single block. The validator exploited a relayer bug to force a series of transactions, outpacing the MEV bots. Despite being slashed from the network, the validator's significant profit remains in three wallets. Polygon's chief information security officer, Muda Gupta, commented on the situation, stating that, quote, the economic incentives are broken here. Euler Finance, exploiter, gives back all the stolen funds. Speaking of hacks, at least this one got a happy ending. Following weeks of drama, the hacker behind the largest DeFi hack of 2023 returned all the $200 million in crypto stolen from Euler Finance. Euler's team confirmed the recovery of the funds taken during the March 13th exploit. Initially, the hacker seemed unrepentant, but eventually had a change of heart and began returning small batches of the stolen funds through encrypted blockchain messages. The hacker's tone turned apologetic last week when they returned 7,000 ETH to Euler with an attached message expressing regret. Identifying themselves as Jacob, the hacker wrote, I didn't want to, but I messed with others' money, others' jobs, others' lives. I really fucked up. I'm sorry. After returning $120 million of the stolen funds, Jacob stated their intention to return the remaining funds ASAP while ensuring their own safety. U.S. Treasury Department issues a report on DeFi. The U.S. Treasury Department has turned its attention to the decentralized finance or DeFi sector, releasing its first ever report on illicit finance risks associated with the industry. The 42-page document highlights that DeFi services are being exploited by various bad actors, including cybercriminals, ransomware attackers, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to launder and transfer illicit funds. Although DeFi services are subject to the Bank Secrecy Act, many are not complying with anti-money laundering and combating terrorist financing, the report says. However, the report also acknowledges that when compared to government-issued or fiat currency transactions, illicit activities in DeFi and crypto remain relatively small in volume and value. Binance US still can't acquire Voyager. A federal judge in New York, Jennifer Reardon, put the $1 billion deal between Binance US and bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital on hold this week, citing a substantial case on the merits from the US government. The government's objections claim that the contract would effectively protect Voyager from breaches of tax or securities law. Voyager and its creditors face potential losses of $100 million if the legal disputes aren't resolved by April 13th. Delays could also cost $10 million per month and leave over 1 million Voyager customers unable to access their savings. The deal approved by U.S. bankruptcy judge Michael Wiles in March allows Binance U.S. to withdraw if the agreement isn't closed within four months. Despite the Securities and Exchange Commission's concern about the Voyager token, VGX, potentially being an unregistered security, Wiles dismissed the agency's arguments. P2P Bitcoin Marketplace Paxful shuts down. Paxful, a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin marketplace, suspended operations, citing key staff departures in a lawsuit filed by co-founder Arthur Shabak and against CEO Ray Youssef and the company. Youssef asked users to withdraw their funds and consider alternative payment applications like Nunes, a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin super app. He claimed that Shabak's litigation team drove away senior staff, leaving Paxful without engineers, compliance, or security personnel. Youssef explained that, quote, all customer funds are accounted for and urged users to self-custody. Despite some users experiencing difficulties with drawing funds, Youssef promised that, quote, funds are safe and they will clear soon. With the platform's closure, Paxful's wallet remains operational for users to safely retrieve their funds. Coinbase insider trading case might reach a settlement. The SEC is reportedly close to settling an insider trading case with former Coinbase employee Ishan Wahi 
and his brother, Nikhil Wahi. A joint court filing revealed that the SEC has, quote, an agreement in principle with Ishan Wahi to resolve all of the SEC's claims and is in, quote, good faith discussions with Nikhil Wahi. Ishan had earlier sought to dismiss the civil charges, but pleaded guilty in February to related criminal wire fraud charges. The case alleges that the Wahis and their friend Samir Ramani made at least $1.1 million in illicit profits by trading tokens before Coinbase announced their listings. The settlement requires approval by SEC Chair Gary Gensler and four other commissioners. Time for fun bits. Hidden in your Mac, the Bitcoin white paper. What's been hidden inside every Mac OS version since 2017 from Mojave to Ventura? Of course, it's the Bitcoin white paper. A user by the name of Burned178 first discovered this back in April of 2021, buried within the Image Capture Utilities Virtual Scanner 2 function. Alongside a nondescript image of a San Francisco bay lies a PDF copy of Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin white paper. Recently, blogger Andy Bio rediscovered this crypto Easter egg and shared it on his blog, Waxy. Bio wrote, Of all the documents in the world, why was the Bitcoin white paper chosen? Is there a secret Bitcoin maxi working at Apple? What would you pay for crypto bankruptcy claims? Ginny Hogan of Unchained has her take on the launch of Open Exchange. And as they always say, if at first you don't succeed, be a rich dude in crypto. Sue Zhu and Kyle Davies, the founders of the bankrupt crypto hedge fund 3AC, are back. They're launching an exchange for insolvent crypto claims, which feels a little bit like giving people paper cuts and then charging for overpriced band-aids. One of the premises of their company, Open Exchange, is to offer claimants for bankrupt funds like FTX and Celsius the chance to be made whole. Given that FTX claims right now are trading at 20 cents on the dollar, it's possible that their definition of whole is the same as SBF's. The venture successfully raised $25 million from investors, which does make me wonder if the vibe in VC right now is like, what's there to lose? CEO Leslie Lamb has said that the goal of the new fund is to help the crypto industry. And let me just say, we love a pivot. The 3AC case is not settled and US authorities have actually issued a subpoena to Kyle Davies via Twitter. You know that Twitter could be used to issue subpoenas? He didn't, but to me, it's no crazier than the idea that FTS claimants could be made whole. Thanks so much for joining us today. To learn more about Representative Emmer and the current state of crypto regulation in the U.S., check out the show notes for this episode. Unchained is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Mark Murdoch, Matt Pilchard, Zach Seward, Juan Aranovich, Sam Sriram, Jenny Hogan, Ben Munster, Jeff Benson, Leandro Camino, Pamela Jimdar, Shashank, and CLK Transcription. Thanks for listening.